Moss by Austin Mooney Sunlight soaked through the fabric of its brilliantly clear liquid body, and the moss ball suspended within it glowed a fantastic hue of lime green that Luke had never seen. He received a mysterious package in the mail this morning, which contained a smart little clear container filled with water and carrying a small moss ball about the size of a nickel. There was no return address to be found on the package. It was wrapped in brown paper with a neat tweed string knot on top. The only information accompanying it was a small card describing the moss. Screaming moss, found in the depths of Iceland's most remote lakes. Screaming moss is named for its loud lime green hue and the screaming sound it produces when it dries out. Keep it in fresh water and clean container daily. Luke assumed it must have been a gift from one of his friends. He had gone to the Saturday market with a modest group of them the previous weekend. Local artists, food vendors, gardeners, and craftsmen from the surrounding area come together in a small clearing by Lake Donovan every Saturday to sell their wares. It has primarily become a place for locals to take visiting family from out of town to give them a taste of the city. But some discoveries surprise even the oldest frequenters. On this particular afternoon, Luke saw a new booth selling moss balls. His friends were surprised when he earnestly commented that he would like to purchase a moss ball. They scrunched their faces and looked at him, confused. They asked him why he would want something so useless. It's not useless, he replied. It's like a pet. The group's movement kept him from further exploring the booth than a passing glance and a light remark. The man maintaining the temporary storefront was mostly hidden, sitting behind his neatly uniformed displays. The top of his head was all they could see. Curly gray hair stretched towards the sky. He appeared to be looking down at his lap, and Luke got the disturbing feeling that he could hear them discussing his passion. They swiftly moved away from the booth and joined the wandering crowd, the moss balls quietly dissolving behind them. Luke thought it was lovely of his friends to send him something so thoughtful, for no reason other than his expressed interest in it. Of course, he would need to find out who had sent it and return the favor somehow. But for now, he needed to find a place to display his newest friend. It deserved prominence in his home. The container made an excellent decoration on his desk. Clean, modern, and containing a living organism, it was a perfect new addition to the shrine of personal objects that kept Luke calm during his working hours. It quickly became his most prized possession, and he loved it as though it were a proper pet. However, the day after he received it, he realized how strictly the instructions for cleaning the container were meant to be followed. Black slime, waste, lined the container in a thin, glossy film. The moss ball was rotting away in its already crowded habitat and suffocating itself with its own refuse. Luke gasped upon seeing it and took it into the kitchen. He removed the container's lid and poured the ball onto his hand. The fuzz tickled his palm. He placed it on a plate and began scrubbing the container with soap and hot water, assuming the ball would be fine for the moment it took to complete his chore. He did not consider putting it in another container of water. He let it sit, drying on the plate. What harm would a couple of minutes bring? The moss ball began to change shape, vibrating with a lime green color that was becoming more intense, draped in the fading sheen of its drying skin. At first, it appeared to be shriveling. Then the wrinkles found definition, the features of a face, an older man's face, formed across the fuzzy surface of the moss ball, and its hot emerald glow became harder and harder to bear with naked eyes. Once the exclamation of its color reached a fever pitch and the face fully formed, its features shook with intent and involuntary spasms. Then the screaming began. A blaring, sharp, agonizingly evil and terribly distressing expulsion of energy in the form of a scream filled the room and knocked Luke backwards. Sonic boom! 
Its mouth appeared to be open, but whether the screaming had waited for that detail to begin wreaking havoc was unclear. Did the moss ball need its mouth to scream? How could it make a sound like that? Luke's mind clumsily rattled and raced for a solution to this alarming development. He quickly filled a cup with water and dropped the moss ball, with the explosive flush of energy still venting out of it inside. The screaming ended as it gently sank to the bottom. The face faded away, and the color returned to its typical hue. The wrinkle smoothed out. It was a standard moss ball again. He wasn't worried about his neighbor's reaction to its screams. They wouldn't even react if it was the person. He shuddered to imagine the situation occurring during one of the many days his landowner shuts off the water in his apartment complex, for one reason or another, without warning. After taking a moment to catch his breath and lower his heart rate, Luke telephoned a friend who was with him on that Saturday afternoon at the market. What's up? Sarah answered. Hey, Luke said before taking a moment to touch his ear and lament the damage recently done to his hearing. Did you send me a moss ball in the mail? No, Sarah laughed. Do you want me to? I got one yesterday and I don't know where it came from. I didn't order it, and there's no return address, but it's addressed to me. So I thought maybe because we saw that moss ball stand on Saturday, and I said I liked moss, you guys sent me a moss ball. Oh, that would have been nice. I wish I had done that. Sorry. Do you know who did? Nobody said anything to me about it, but we were with Keith and Jesse the whole day. I don't know how they could have done it without you knowing, unless they went to the seller's website or something. Have you asked them? Not yet, but I don't feel like they did it either, Luke said. That would be uncharacteristically thoughtful of them, Sarah said with an audible grin. It's so weird. Maybe the guy running the stand heard your interest, figured out where you lived, and sent it to you. Why would he do that? I don't know. He sells moss at Saturday Market. He's probably weird. I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with ideas. Will you come with me to the market again tomorrow and see if the vendor is still there? Then I can talk to him about it. It's a pretty crazy moss. It's from Iceland. Whoa, that sounds cool. And yeah, I'm free. I can meet you. Ten? I'll buy coffee. Perfect. The two friends ended their conversation, and Luke called the others. Keith and Jesse had the same response as Sarah. They all said they would meet him at Saturday Market the following day to speak with the moss salesman. After he got off his call, Luke dipped the clean container into the cup. He scooped up the moss ball, making sure not to let it leave the water, and returned it to his desk. The following morning, Luke woke to the sound of screaming. Tides of wailing rattled the walls of Luke's apartment as he threw himself out of bed and sprinted to his desk. He had forgotten to secure the lid back over the container. The water had evaporated overnight, and now the moss ball was fully exposed. In its death throes, it screeched louder than before. Its vibrancy began to fade, and it started shifting from lime green to dark green to brown. As its color faded, its screaming got louder. Luke picked up the container and ran it over to the kitchen sink. He turned on the faucet, but nothing came out. The distinct low fizzle of empty pipes attempting to suck up absent water pierced through the moss ball's cries. The water had been shut off. Then, in the chaos of his mind, Luke acted on the first two impulses that would surprise him that day. He took a knife out of his kitchen drawer, and he cut the moss ball in half. Of course, any notion of this thing being his pet was no longer of concern to him. He did not care for it. It was madness to impose such a responsibility onto someone. The two halves formed into two faces, both screaming, both getting louder. He pulled a box of matches out from the drawer, lit one, and set them on fire. The screaming stopped. Everything stopped. Silence. Luke felt the cool, wet presence of blood flowing down from the left and right sides of his neck. His fingers followed the paths up to his ears. His eardrums had burst. 
he could still feel the screaming. Perhaps louder than before, but he could not hear it. The blast of energy from its sound waves rattled through his abdomen. Sensations wrapped into each other, and sounds became feelings. He could feel it. Deep inside, it made him sick. His stomach turned rotten. Even death he could not escape. The moss balls had turned to black ash, but they were still screaming. The ash was screaming. Luke wiped the ash back into its container and fashioned the lid over it to stifle its cry. He put it in his trunk, wiped the blood from his neck, and drove to Lake Donovan. It was a quarter after nine, and Saturday market vendors had just finished setting up their stands. The sun was rising over the water, and the weather was expected to cooperate. It was, for everyone else, shaping up to be a perfect Saturday. Luke parked and got out of his car with the container. He knew people were wondering about the screaming. He knew they were looking at him carrying his moss ball container full of ash. For a moment, he was happy he could not hear anything. He didn't want to hear anyone try and stop him. He approached the water's edge and looked down. There wasn't a beach to speak of. Luke was standing on an elevated platform, roughly twenty feet above the water's surface. The water went down another forty feet below that. It got deep and dark very quickly. He took the container out of his pocket and removed the lid before dropping it into the water. The moment it touched the surface, the pain in his gut went away, and he felt immense relief. Stress from the sonic attack that had waged against him had dissipated. He was safe. However, soon that feeling was replaced by another. He felt the ghostly presence of someone behind him. He could tell who it was. It was the same feeling he had last week when he thought the moss seller could hear him. It was him. He was standing behind Luke. As a hand touched Luke's shoulder, he acted on the second of two impulses that surprised him that day. He pulled the hand forward and threw the person behind him into the water below. A small old man's body slapped against the water and slowly sank. His curly hair grasped towards the surface like a crowd of little arms, all crawling against the pull of the deep. His face turned towards the surface, and Luke could see it was the same face that had formed in the moss. It was his face. The ash of the former moss ball still near the surface clung to his limp body as he sank. He began to spread out and grow. Dark sludge wrapped him in a slimy cocoon. It turned from black to brown to bright green. His body was bringing the moss back to life. The moss was feeding off his body. It was thriving around him. Before disappearing into the dark, Luke saw the true size of this new moss ball, and pain returned to his stomach. Another hand touched his shoulder. Luke turned around and saw Sarah. She was speaking, but he could not hear her. His strength gave out, and he abruptly sat on the ground. Sarah asked him a couple of unanswered questions before making him stand back up and guiding him to the car. While she drove them to the hospital, he looked out the window. He watched the lake pass by and wondered if they would pull the old man's body out. Would they know the enormous moss ball was him? He wondered if they would have to drain the lake to find him. What an incredible sound that would be.